Hello, my name is Neil Ferguson. I am the Millbank Family Senior Fellow here at the Hoover Institution, and I am also the chair of the Hoover History Working Group. Uh, and this week, we've been very fortunate to be joined by Professor John Davis, uh, who's director of the Strand Group at King's College London. Before that, uh, for many years, uh, John Davis uh, ran an extraordinarily interesting project at Queen Mary uh, University of London, the, the Mile End Group, which involved bringing all kinds of luminaries from British politics, including at least two former prime ministers, uh, to a kind of uh, large scale research and seminar uh, project. Uh, he also taught at award winning uh, special subjects on the Blair government uh, and published a book on that subject, uh, Heroes or Villains, the Blair government uh, reconsidered. Uh, John's currently working on a new book on uh, the uh, the British Prime Minister as uh, institution, and uh, his paper for us was entitled Recent Gyrations of the Prime Minister's Office and Decision Making in Historical Perspective. John, welcome to Hoover. Um, let, let me uh, open uh, with a question about the nature of, of British politics itself. Uh, Simon Cooper has an entertaining book out called Chums, in which he argues that it's really all about a tiny number of people who went to Oxford together. And British politics is just a competition between that group uh, to see who can get to be prime minister to the top of the greasy pole. Is there any truth to that? Or is there something more going on here than just Oxford student politics writ large? Uh, I think it's uh, inescapable that there's something uh, to this particular argument. I'm not saying that I buy it completely, but if you take the idea that uh, Britain is a is a conservative country that sometimes votes Labour, um, and so conservatives are in for a good two thirds, if not more, of the time, certainly uh, in the 20th century and into the 21st century. Uh, so you're looking at the Conservative Party, then you look at the makeup of the Conservative Party. And many of them have been to Oxford. There's no, there's no doubt about that. Um, and then from that, many of them uh, do a particular course at Oxford, uh, PPE, uh, Politics, Philosophy and Economics. Um, a, a course which um, um, uh, gives, a, as its name uh, uh, says, uh, gives a broad view over the great uh, politics, great philosophers, great economists, um, and what it does is it sort of like gives an idea that you're the, an introduction, um, but because it's at Oxford, that introduction gets greater cachet. Um, and so linked to that is the confidence that you've made it to Oxford and you're amongst very impressive, clever people. So a confidence starts to breed from this. And so what you've got here, um, especially when you bear in mind that um, Oxford has uh, a preponderance uh, of uh, fee-paying school entrants, uh, fee-paying schools that uh, educate around about 7% of the UK population. You can, the, 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 I think the thesis holds a great deal of water. So I'm not going to stick up for uh, PPE, but perhaps I should stick up for Oxford. It, it's been providing prime ministers for a very long time. And I wonder if part of the story you're telling us is a story of a decline in, well, what? Is it the quality of prime ministers or is it the governability of, of Britain? What's changed since, let's say, the 1990s, since Tony Blair's time, uh, that you you could call the problem? I'm, I, I'm not sure whether it's structural or just a matter of uh, of inferior quality people. Um, look, I, I, I'm not going to lay into Oxford neither. Um, I mean, just before your 1990s, uh, Margaret Thatcher, I think, uh, arguably the most impressive of prime ministers, certainly since the Second World War, was the, a famous sign of uh, Oxford. Um, now, in terms of quality, I mean, so 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 we've explained why um, so many come from uh, 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 Oxford uh, and and into that uh, incredible sort of like upward um, 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 escalator uh, from Oxford into the Conservative Party and not just into the Conservative Party but often into the higher reaches of the Conservative Party really quite quickly. If we're talking about um, has there been a decline in quality overall, I think 
I, I really don't want to say it. I really don't, because I'm, I'm always looking. I'm so conscious of the old idea of same as it ever was, that there was a golden age um, a time ago. Also conscious of uh, the years passing myself. But I think, you know, talking with so many people, looking at these things from so many different angles, I think it is the case that the overall quality of British politician is not as strong as it once was. Huge, many great um, uh, um, um, uh, uh, exceptions to 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 what I'm saying there, but I think overall the quality is not as strong. And I think you just go into all kinds of issues here around um, the ideas of public uh, sorry, pro, uh, public intrusion into private lives. Um, I think that actually it becomes a relatively less remunerated. Um, a, a job, you know, contrary to what the uh, the popular idea is of, like very rich politicians, you know, who are earning fortunes, is simply not the case. Um, and so, you know, you, you put all these things together, the social media pressure, especially on women. Um, it, it's, it, I don't think it's as nice a job as it once was. Let's talk about Brexit because obviously the thing that upended. Uh, British politics in, in 2016 was the result of the, the Brexit referendum. And it, it hasn't felt as if uh, British politics has been stable since, culminating, of course, in the, the year of three prime ministers in, in 2022. How far do you think it's really been that issue that has driven the political turmoil and that even the most talented politicians would have struggled to stabilise uh, Britain economically and politically, if they if they'd been prime minister, if the day after the referendum, I think it's inescapable that that's exactly what has happened. You know what I would start to describe as the Brexit revolution, this incredible uh, decision by a country to take a refer a referendum outside of a general election. Um, a binding 50-50, you know, you just get that 51%, 52% in actuality that would uh, uh, that would completely uh, uh, upend um, um, 40, 50 years uh, of ever closer union um, in, in legal, in, 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 uh, in it, just, well, it just goes on. It's it's the most gargantuan decision. And it was taken against a ruling party by a civil war within that ruling, ruling party. And so, you know, it, it, on the morning after the referendum that David Cameron had called, he resigns immediately. Um, and then one by one, um, the, 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 big, the big supporters of Brexit, uh, sorry, of remaining are removed from the Conservative Party, um, one by one until you've got a cabinet under Boris Johnson who largely was chosen not because of ability, but because of fealty to this Brexit idea. And then what's happened from it, it took several years, three years, to actually get Brexit done. Um, Theresa May, I think in retrospect, uh, actually put together a great deal that might have, that might have stabilised things, a really good deal. Um, but it was rejected because it became a logical conclusion that we had to go for the hardest break possible. Now, we all know that Britain's history is half in and half out when it comes to Europe. When we were outside, we desperately wanted to be in. When we're in, when some of us des des desperately want to be out. I think Britain's destiny is to be in a halfway house. And that's what I, I think is now coming. One of the themes of your work going back many years is the role of the civil service uh, in British political life. And I think for, for many people, British politics is still summed up by the, the sitcom Yes Minister and later Yes Prime Minister. Uh, I, I've often wondered if the civil service is, is so powerful, why were they unable to stop Brexit, which can't have been something that any civil servant wanted What's the answer to that? I'm sure that there were some civil servants who did, but it's certainly the case that many did not. Um, I actually think that what's happened since Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister 
in a small way possibly because of yes minister and yes prime minister what's happened is that the power of the civil service has reduced over time i think that yes minister um parodies a time of the 1960s and 70s where you had the pendulum politics of uh, Labour then Tory and Labour then Tory, where the civil service was obviously to the fore and they were in charge, you know, in all kinds of ways, not totally, but they were, there was a great, there was a great deal more influence around. What I think has happened since Thatcher is a return of democracy that what's happened, um, you know, whether you like democracy or not, what has happened is that, the, is that the popular will is now transferred by prime ministers who are un, unprepared to uh, listen, uh, to defer to civil servants in a way that that parody that Yes Minister brings out uh, may well have been true in that earlier period. But I also, you know, uh, uh, commend you, your recall as a great uh, expert on Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister. Remember how Jim Hacker becomes Prime Minister. It's because he attacks Europe and says that we've got to protect the great British banger, if my memory serves correct. And uh, in that sense, it was prophetic as well as as well as well funny. A, a, a lot... A lot. <laughs> A last question, which is perhaps an unfair one, about about the future. Where where does uh, Britain go from here? You you sit in London at a time of, I think, considerable depression, despondency about the outlook economically. Uh, things aren't great. It almost feels as if we've gone back to the nineteen seventies with high inflation and a rash of of strikes. Uh, it's a little hard to say who will be the next prime minister, but give me a sense of where you think Britain goes from here. Is Brexit actually going to end up being reversed or are they, we stuck with it? Uh, if you look at opinion polling right now in uh, uh, in late January uh, 2023, uh, the opinion polling is starting to, well, I mean, it's been, it's been nudging all the way. It's now starting to nudge two thirds uh, of people who are convinced that it was a mistake. Um, this is being seen massively in the constituencies that Boris Johnson won for the Conservatives for the first time in many cases uh, from the Labour Party, that that vote has become very soft and is, and is showing great deal of regret, regrets it, as the, as the current phrase says. Um, look, where, where do we go from here? You're, you're un, you're, uh, it's, uh, it's undeniably true that what is happening is a great despondency that, is, uh, that has descended upon British politics. I think that not only uh, are we uh, predicted to uh, grow less, uh, that our, if there is a recession, the recession will be deeper than uh, than close uh, partners um, or competitors, um, comparators. Uh, that 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 what that's on the economic side. I think when you look at foreign policy, yes, we were out front over Ukraine, but it's not you know like apart from Boris Johnson visiting uh, Zelensky so often. Um, it, it, it's you know it it, it it doesn't feel like we're at the fore, the forefront of things, and nor will we, I think, ever be again. Um, so I think that what 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 we're seeing is a hastening of decline. Um, you'll recall that Liz Truss, in her leadership campaign, uh, aped Margaret Thatcher from the nineteen seventies, not just the way that she was dressing like her, but also uh, this hatred of decline. But I think that uh, Mrs. Truss has actually hastened in some respects that decline. My, I'm, I'm a natural optimist, Neil. Um, and so from my point of view, I think that however far we go down, I do still think that there hopefully is is a return not to where we were not to you know if i if i look back and i think about blair whatever you think about him in the in the months after 9 11 he bestrode the globe he was everywhere 
Um, and people were listening, listening to him. When you think back to Margaret Thatcher and Gorbachev, a man we can do business with, um, you go further back to the Falklands um, and how Britain could put quite a mighty fleet to uh, together. None of these things are true anymore. Um, and so I think that um, it's, it's going to be a hard lesson, but I think that Britain's destiny as a mid-rank European nation is, has only been hastened by, for what some people thought Brexit was a return to greatness. Uh, John, thank you so much indeed for joining us. Uh, your paper, Recent Gyrations of the Prime Minister's Office and Decision-Making in Historical Perspective, is available from the Hoover History Working Group website as a Hoover History Working Paper. Uh, it's been a great pleasure uh, to host you, and we look forward to the book when it comes out. I won't ask you for a pub date yet. Uh, John Davis, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.